All right. Hi, and welcome to Fitting It All In, a virtual experience. Just a reminder, this has, this is a previous recording and um, our focus is on how we can purposely integrate technology to enhance student learning. And we are in our Zoom room waiting for you. If you have any questions or comments, we would love to hear from you. So stop by, just check the Progro catalog and it will give you the link. Hi everyone, I'm Chrystia Cabral. I teach first grade at Highland Ranch and you can find me on Twitter if you're looking um, at Chrystia Cabral or for email, it's kcabral at powusd.com. And I'm Sally Koenig and I teach fourth at Sundance Elementary. And you can only find me at my Poway email. I haven't gotten on Twitter yet or Instagram, but one of these days, maybe. All your free time. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> like everyone else. Um, our essential question today, how might we purposely integrate technology to enhance student learning? So as you all know, the EdTech PLLs, the EdTech team, has worked really hard to talk about how we can use technology to enhance our student learning. And so today, Chrissy and I are diving into that, into the VLA setting, and hopefully we'll be able to give you some tips and tricks on how we have used technology. As we know, technology is the future for our students. And so hopefully you will find some things today that will help you to answer this essential question. So before we start, just a little warm up, see how people are feeling. This morning teachers take the time to sit down and relax for 10 minutes to eat your lunch, or you can end up looking like this. And I imagine this is how many of us look every day in the world of VLA, trying to uh, manage apps and kids and assignments and everything in between. So as Sally said, we are really here just to um, hopefully make your VLA world a little bit easier. Um, if there's anything that comes up in the slides, you know, take notes. And again, we will be available for the Q&A portion today. So we are just here to push some things out and to help make your VLA, VLA life a tiny bit easier. <laughs> and this slide sums it up. We, we understand. <laughs> We're, we're all just doing the best we can. So the, in this presentation, we're going to go over a sample of a primary day and an upper day. And again, by no means is this the be all end all, but it's what we have found works for us. Uh, we're gonna go over some of the platforms and the technology that we have found works for us. We're gonna talk about what we found works for asynchronous. So what we've had success with asynchronously, and then just some tips of things that we cannot do without. And um, again, we're available for questions and comments. And I think we would both agree, we would love to hear what's worked for you all as well. So please don't Absolutely. hesitate to let us know what has worked for you. So I'm going to start with a sample day in primary. And as I shared, I teach first grade. Um, so this is kind of what um, the first grade team that I work on, we came up with a schedule that we post on Canvas. And what it, this is kind of what it looks like. So every day looks very similar to this day um, with the week at the top, the reminders um, with some visuals so the kids know what to bring. And then we kind of outline what we're going to be doing. And this is kind of twofold. It's kind of like a virtual teacher's plan book, but it's also a guiding light for parents and students. So everybody can see what we're doing when we're doing it. Um, if for some reason we have a kiddo that is not at a session, okay, this is what you miss. You need to get these things. Many of the links are active. So um, as parents are on Canvas looking at it, um, they can click to see what the assignments were. Um, we kind of break it up a little with the morning whole class, like a morning meeting. We do a morning journal. We have a little bit of a body break. And then into our social studies whole class, or I'm sorry, language arts whole class time is using that the benchmark materials that we have, kind of like a common theme 
for things. This is not when we do um, small groups or reading groups, but it is an opportunity to, as a whole class, learn a reading lesson. Um, and then we have a whole class math lesson, which is usually a math talk. Um, again, not necessarily are we all doing the same page, but it is an opportunity for us as a class to think about math. Um, then we have our lunch break. And after lunch is when we get into groups. So groups are, it's either a math uh, group, either a reading group, or sometimes we do personal check-ins, which I'll share a little bit more about in a couple of slides. Um, and then on the side there, you can see there's some independent work that the kids could be doing while we're in these groups. Um, and then some choice work. Um, and the afternoon session for the asynchronous um, the kids are working on their Lexia, their iReady, and then the integrated lessons that are offered by our PUSD um, tech team, which are amazing. So we use those every day for the kids for their asynchronous time. Um, so a little bit about the check-ins and what I found that has uh, motivated and enhanced student learning is um, we do these badging activities and it's like a personal playlist <laughs> for the kids but when you say badging first graders think it's amazing like earning a sticker is the coolest thing in the whole wide world so you want them to earn their stickers or their badges um, and they're virtual little smileys and they get very excited but what I've done um, a group of teachers and I started this idea um, based on John Hattie's work of kids learning at their own level. So um, when am I gonna learn? How am I gonna learn it? How am I going to show you that I know it? So based on those three elements, we created these learning targets and there's some for math and there's some for phonics. Um, and those are like the two areas, reading phonics that we're working on in, in first grade. And what it is on the learning targets are basically the standards or expectations based on what you're teaching your kids. Uh, math is so much easier because it's like basically guided right out of the book. Um, for the learning targets, we do the phonetic inventory, and I base all of my levels of badging on their mastery of that inventory. And um, what then happens is each kid gets one of these sheets, either on paper or virtual. You can do it both ways, and you're monitoring their progress. So when you're meeting with them in that one-on-one, -on -one, you're asking them, like, where are you at in your badging? Oh, today I can show you. Um, how 10 is a group of 10 ones. Oh, how are you going to show me? Let me get my whiteboard. Awesome. I made a video. Great. Once you review it and they've mastered it, then they earn that star or badge. I mean, they move on to the next thing and it, they just keep progressing and progressing at their own level. Um, and so this is a great opportunity for when those kids are like, well, I did all of my classwork. What can I work on? Like, well, how are you doing on your personal badging? Um, so I would love to talk more about this. But this is just one great way that you can enhance student learning um, just by making it more personal and more exciting for them. Now, Chrissia, do they, um, do they get this as like a piece of paper in their packets or do they actually do you just do this online with them? Yes, so I've done it both ways. I've sent the link so that each kid has a Google form I'm sorry, a Google Doc, and then that's where I put their virtual stickers. Um, when we were in person, I would give them a packet, right? So the packet was, this was the cover page, and then there were activities, or there are links, which is more now the virtual way, like here is a Lexia assignment that you can do to help you master, you know, your second learning target, or here's a, um, a link to Khan Academy that you can watch, teach yourself how to do this, show me that you've mastered it, and then they move on. So it's worked both virtually and in person. Cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I can get the, I can get now the screen. Now we're stuck on this slide. <laughs> on this slide. Oh, and there it goes. Sorry. Technology. There we go. <laughs> Okay, um, here is my kind of sample day. So again, I'm fourth grade and um, I jumped on the Bitmoji bandwagon. And so every morning my students will automatically go into Canvas and they check and this is on my Canvas page. So when they check in the mornings, they the very first thing they need to do is they have to go to 
a Google form that is their check-in or their attendance form for the day. And you can see that where the link is and they know just to click on that link. And this form is um, something that I created through Google Forms and it's just a check-in with them each day. It's a very, very short check-in. It also serves as attendance for me. Uh, I will admit um, about, oh, a month or two into the school year, I thought, oh, do I really wanna do this anymore? But I will tell you, I get so much information from this one little form that I just decided to keep it going, even if it might feel redundant. Um, I get a lot of great responses from students on this. This is a great SEL type thing. They'll tell me sometimes things that they don't want the rest of the class to know or some things that they want everybody to know. And so this gives them a place to use their voice without, you know, in the middle of class, hey, I lost a tooth or whatever. This gives them a chance. Um, it's also worked out very well being fourth grade. They're getting more in to wanting to talk more about their emotions. And so there's the option on there, you know, I've had a rough start to the day and I need to check in. And that has really worked wonders for me this year. I've had a few students that just need that extra check-in with me. And this reminds me, okay, you need to check in with them. I've actually linked this to a Google Sheet. And when the students are coming in on Zoom, I have the Google Sheet up on another computer and I can kind of see as they come in, I can mark attendance and then I can also see how they're doing. And you can kind of see here at the top of the Google form. If you've never used a Google form, I highly, highly suggest it. Um, so you can see, um, I've got 31 responses. I have 33 kids now. And so that's not all of them, but um, most of them will get this done. So. Um, this has been probably one of the biggest tech tools that I've used because it really hits that SEL part of it right mm -hmm. from the beginning of the day. So they feel like their voice has been heard right away. Um, our sample day, uh, it's pretty, for Monday through Friday, it, each day kind of has their own thing that we do, but the schedule for the most part is the same. You can see our morning meetings a little bit longer and I do that again, I feel like the upper grades need um, that extra SEL time to really kind of open them up for the day. And the more that they're able to start talking first thing, the more that they're willing to talk throughout the day and, and contribute to things. So we, we do do a morning work type thing that I actually send out in packets. So that is, a paper and pencil type thing. And then we go over that on the DocuCam. We, our school does Harmony Buddies, which is through Sanford Harmony. And that's putting students into breakout rooms and they're talking with a buddy, or we do a Sanford Harmony, which is a social emotional learning lesson. And right there, you can plug most anything in as long as you are reaching, I feel like reaching out to all the students. And usually by 8.50, I have, checked in in some way or form with every single student so they know that they've been acknowledged and hopefully are ready to go. Um, mm -hmm. We take just our quick breaks, get up, get a drink or whatever. Then we dive into benchmark and benchmark again, they've been given in packet pickups our benchmark textbook as well as I use markers and minions by Toluca Rivers. And so that's paper pencil but they do use the benchmark universe for the assessment. They also use it for their small group reading. Um, after we've done that, we dive into small groups and that's an independent work time where they work on their playlist. And I'll show you um, the playlist here in just a moment. Small groups just kind of depends on the day, um, what we're covering. And again, that is usually in relation to something on Benchmark Universe. So mm -hmm. they're logging into Benchmark Universe through that. Um, after recess, we typically do some sort of writing or reading activity. Um, earlier in the week, we analyze the prompts through Benchmark. Um, later on in the week, I give them independent reading and writing time and then that's a time that they can check in with me. 
Um, I still do just a good old fashioned read aloud in the mm -hmm. afternoon. Um, I feel it's so important to expose them to different things, different things that they would never probably choose for themselves. And so we do just an old fashioned read aloud, but I did kind of want to go back here to the Bitmoji classroom. I've used Loom as well. And up here where there are these keys, I also have another read aloud that, that I do on the side if they ever want to listen to that as well. Um, mm -hmm. Math, so math is just a combination of just the math expressions book combined in with um, on the math bitmoji classroom that I have there. There's some manipulatives they can use. We dive in sometimes to freckle or some dog or extra math, which are apps that they can use. And then we have our I ready time in the afternoon. So at our school, we are we have challenges going on all the time to get their minutes in. And mm -hmm. we include that as part of their school day to make sure that they get those mm -hmm. minutes in. And then in the afternoons, mystery science. Um, gosh, there's lots of other things that either social studies, art, directed drawings, PE, go noodle. So it just kind of depends on the day. Trying to fit something in there um, yeah. each, each day. So Very similar for us. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. There we go. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Okay, the playlist. So I have been using a playlist for the last couple of years. And again, this is upper grade. So a um, little bit higher expectations of how they can maneuver around a playlist. Um, you can see here spelling and grammar. There's a trifold on there through markers and minions that they download. And then we have a shared drive in Google Suites that they have been taught how to move that over into the shared drive. Um, there's always some sort of benchmark thing that they're doing. My school pays for Spelling City, although if you have Spelling City, you'll know that they changed how it goes and it's very confusing now. <laughs> but um, I have found Spelling City to be really useful, but that is a paid program. Um, grammar work is just through, through the benchmark, it is a paper one. Cursive, this is a program I had purchased off of TPT that they use. Um, Fluency Read, so I did wanna talk a little bit about Fluency Read. We do that through Canvas Assignments, through Canvas Studio. And um, my goal for second trimester was to explore more in Canvas and the assignments and quizzes and Studio. I will tell you one of the best things I ever did was set this fluency read up. They read some sort of passage every single week in this. And oh my goodness, to be able to catch all 33 of them reading to me every week is absolutely amazing. So mm -hmm. if, if anybody needs help with this, I'm always happy to help with that because I think it's a great tool with the technology. And then the writer's notebook reading log just another Canvas assignment we use. And then you can see the other tech um, that I use there on the bottom. And then you can see there, I have my Bitmoji classroom. So um, I did this kind of as I need to feel like I should have my focus wall somewhere virtually, because <laughs> um, we've always worked so hard on our focus wall. So this is my virtual focus wall. I can always refer them um, if you're having a hard time with the, the spelling pattern or the language skills that we're working on, check out the language arts Bitmoji classroom, see if that can help you out. And this is especially helpful asynchronous. So if they're working and I can't help them, they can refer to this classroom and maybe get um, a little bit of help from this classroom. So that is that for our day. An amazing day of learning. <laughs> Busy. Yes. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to transition into some technology that we found to work um, for our virtual learning. And when we're looking at tech, we wanted to look at two sides of it. We're looking at technology that is working for student learning and then technology that we've used to kind of showcase student learning. Um, so I'm pretty sure everyone is aware and familiar as much as they can be with iReady and Lexia. Um, iReady and Lexia are awesome, especially for my kids doing those um, 
those learning targets, um, they put it inside of what we call our personal learning folder, and they have goals set based on their iReady scores and their Lexia levels. Um, so I really appreciate having both the, access to both of those right now. And then there's also benchmark. Um, I think that's one of the way, one of the places that I've really tried to expand this year mm -hmm. is benchmark because we don't have the small readers that mm -hmm. in the upper grades that we can always have available to them. Um, so for me, that that has been nice. Epic. The kids love <laughs> Epic. <laughs> right, right. No doubt about it. They love Epic. <laughs> I think it's amazing during school hours. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have just started dabbling in Nearpod. Um, I got that idea. My high school son uses Nearpod a lot. So if anybody is interested, it has so far been an amazing tech tool. So um, I'll kind of, I don't have a lot to say about that one, but I know so far it's been, been doing well. Same with Mystery Science. Mm -hmm. um, if you use Mystery Science, they have a digital version of everything right. and they have tips for virtual learning. It has been a game changer for science for me this year. And then Sanford Harmony, I put Sanford Harmony on here. I know, I know not all the schools use it, but it is, their website is free and they, all you have to do is sign up for an account. And they have a lot of really good social emotional learning lessons on there. And I, I feel like that has been an amazing tool for my classroom. So I put that on there if anybody wanted to explore what Sanford Harmony was and see some of their resources. Mm -hmm. Sorry. No. That's that's home home learning that's, for that's right? what happens when you're at home. Dogs bark. It's real. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> uh, text uh, technology to showcase student learning. So um, my absolute favorite showcase of learning is Write Reader. Um, the kids get to write their own books and then share them with each other and and share this virtual link that parents can see their stories. And it's just been a really great way to celebrate writing, which is a huge accomplishment in first grade to get sentences on paper. Um, so right reader is definitely our number one. Um, Seesaw, of course, we do a lot of our assignments in Seesaw. Um, we love that one. I, 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 I have not used Seesaw, but I've heard it's amazing. Oh. I, I have dabbled as in Flipgrid. Um, I've had some good luck with Flipgrid. Um, and then just the, the Google suite, uh, yeah. there are so many amazing things to do in there. <laughs> right. That I could, you know, work forever on that and probably still not figure everything out. So, and then I've used Padlet. I put Padlet on there. That's kind of a fun one where, um, you can share your screen and either they use a QR code or they just use your link and, they can put things up and they can add pictures and all these things that is all showcased on one screen of everybody's work. So that one, my kids love doing that one. So that was. Yeah, Flip, a, yeah Flipgrid's pretty fun. Even at first grade, they're okay. pretty talented at Flipgrid because they can see each other's videos and then they can comment on each other's if you choose to let them comment. but. We did once a project where they all had to create something and instead of one at a time sharing, we all did Flipgrid. So they each made a video and then the whole class can see all the videos and then share out like, oh my gosh, I saw your box. Your box is so cool. So that's a great like quick tool. Whole class can see everyone's everything. <laughs> well, and on that same note, you can also make it so that you you don't show everything and you can look at it beforehand. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Or, you know, the older grades, you can make sure. Yes. Okay. Or, you know, there are some students that it mortifies them to yes. about theirs being shown. And, and a lot of times, you know, it's, you're just able to take theirs off as well. So. Yes. Only, yes. It is fully teacher accessible, as in I get to decide whose video is shown. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and they know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, going on here. 
I am so sorry. It, no, you're doing great. It's, it's like it freezes up here. <laughs> okay, so working smarter. Yes, yeah, so I feel like the idea of working smarter, um, I was once told as a teacher, you should steal everything. And that is how I live my life, by stealing. And I feel like there are so many resources out there that you don't have to buy. Um, you can steal or borrow or ask someone to share with you. And the first of those is the district provided resources that we have. And if you're looking at the PUSD virtual learning tab in Canvas, there is a million and one things that you can copy and paste and use in your classroom that make you look like a super stellar virtual teacher. So and there's a million and one videos on there too. Yes. That can walk you through things that really you'll surprise yourself what you can do. Absolutely. And so I feel like if you haven't had an opportunity to visit the district provided virtual learning page, please do that today. And if you need help getting there, we are here to help you. Um, but there's definitely some amazing resources that will make your virtual learning experience a little less loaded in terms of the work that you're putting in. Um, and then on the other side, some teacher created things. Um, I shared the slides that we use. So one thing that has really made um, success <laughs> in the, the world of virtual learning for us happen is um, you get so caught up in what you're doing. And so we created a, kind of a template of Google Slides to help us get through the day. And what we do is we make it for the whole week and then we copy paste from week to week. So I shared our example and it will be in our link for sharing. And if you wanna look over it or have questions, again, we'll be here to help you, but you are more than welcome to make a copy and use it for yourself. Um, and then there are so many social media groups that make teaching a whole lot easier than it once was, but definitely get involved in those Facebook groups because they make templates and share templates that um, you just make your copy and then you're an amazing teacher all over again. <laughs> well, and I think even, you know, you were talking about with your alls with first grade doing that, you just put yourself out there to your colleagues and mm -hmm. they, they probably have something so you don't have to reinvent it. And yeah. I know that's easier said than done, but I've, I've had to put myself out there a lot this year. Hey, what are you guys doing for this? And we, we've tried to make a text stream for everybody. Hey, what are your thoughts on this? Because somebody probably already has something created and they're willing to share it with you. You just have to let them know you need it. So absolutely. And even on Teachers Pay Teachers, I put that on there. There's a lot of free stuff on Teachers Pay Teachers that's just a quick download. And yes. you can pop it in there and it saves the day. <laughs> so don't, don't be afraid. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Okay, sorry, mine. Every time this is wanting to do this. Like maybe I want to change the page. Maybe not. Like I'm a student. I'm not. <laughs> um, so on here, this is just some um, apps we couldn't teach without. Chrissy, is that the screen that's coming up for you? Yep. Oh, okay. Um, I got that friendly. Your internet is unstable. Come up. Ah. So that always makes me nervous. Um, that's the best. <laughs> <laughs> so these are just some different things that we found work well. Of course, the Google Suite, um, uh, just really, I could not do without that. I put Pandora on there. I like to use music throughout the day. And I found for me, the one that I can control the easiest is Pandora, because I put it on my phone. And then I'm not trying to use my computer also for the music, since I'm using my computer as my screen. <laughs> um, Pandora has been a lifesaver. I just put like kids radio. Uh, Freckle, Freckle is free. There's some great math and language arts lessons. Some dog is a math, um, math component to it. I put on here this online stopwatch. I just had to put that on there because they have a classroom section 
So if say we're doing I ready time or whatever, I'll pop that up on my screen so the kids know. Um, I put on here just because this is my probably my one tech that I can't live without my document camera. Um, <laughs> It, what, it did cost money, unfortunately, like a lot of us have, have just have all this money and know we're wanting to put into this. But this document camera has been my life saver for um, things. Uh, and I know some schools you've been able to bring yours home. Um, my school, I didn't know that until later. And so I already had this, um, I installed the software and there we went. Bitmoji, it's a fun thing to add if you don't have Bitmoji. Um, it's a lot of fun. You can add a link to it, add it on the Google Slides. That's a lot of fun. I put on here Zoom polls. I use Zoom polls a lot through Zoom to kind of uh, see where my, my kiddos are and then Loom. Um, mm -hmm. If you haven't used Loom, it's a um, pretty easy app to use. And let me put this out there. I am probably one of the least tech savvy people that there are. I am like a paper pencil. I have to visually see things and I've been able to navigate these things. So if I can do it, um, others can do it, trust me. Um, so these are just, and again, I'm sure that you guys have lots more and we love, 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 love to hear about them. Yes. Um, yeah, was there any other apps or anything you can think of? Uh, no, I mean, these are all great. These are all great ones. And I think having the paper pencil is still very helpful. So it's great to hear you guys are doing the packets. You know, we, we do the packet pickup also, um, but I agree. I, we would love to hear more ideas. And this is just sparks to get, to get your brains going and to think of things that maybe you haven't done or you have and you want to do better. We're just kind of here to help. Yeah, yeah. And I know it can seem overwhelming and it does. A lot of it does take time, unfortunately. And we're all running out of time. But sometimes if I tell myself, okay, I'm just gonna sit down for a couple of minutes, learn this new thing, maybe down the line it saves me a lot of time. And you know, our main goal in the end is we're trying to enhance student learning. We're trying to make the best out of the situation. And I think we'd all agree that we're here for the students and this is a very different time for them. And so what can we do to provide the best learning environment for them? Yep, that is our job. <laughs> and you're all doing it well. Yes. <laughs> yes, you are. Here's the hat on the yeah, back. Thank you. <laughs> so that is it. And let's yep. see, do you have anything else you want to add? No, keep strong, teachers. You're doing great work out there. We are here for you. And uh, thank you for watching. Yes. All right. Bye. Mm -hmm.